uh, at the Olympic Stadium. We'll see the 100 meters. Michael Johnson is the great medal hope. Obviously, uh, not Michael Johnson, he will not be running in the 100 meters, but it's going to be the big event. The great sprint of these Olympic Games will be run there today, so the events will go forward. Uh, Mayor Bill Campbell is with us now from the city of Atlanta. We talked a lot just this past week about security considerations. You were confident that you had everything in place. Do you think that there's any way that this event could have been prevented? No, ultimately, it is a public park, Tom. It is a place where literally hundreds of thousands of people have been gathering over the last several weeks. It's been a place of great joy and celebration. That, of course, has dampened a great deal, but the games must go on and life must go on. We can never guard against terrorism everywhere at all times. Did you think about putting in some kind of screening devices around that park when you were designing it? Well, when the park was designed, it was just that, as a park. It's inconceivable that you would, in essence, have to screen people to go into a park. It has become one of the great gathering places for these Olympic Games, for the visitors who have come. I think, ultimately, even had we screened people going into the park, this could have happened on the streets in other parks, in other locations. Ultimately, you can only do so much in protecting against terrorism. It cannot now be business as usual, obviously. No, You're going to have to make some changes. Yes, we will make changes at every venue. The security will be increased uh, at all of our public gathering places. We will be much more vigilant, although I want you to know that it was the heroism and the attention of several security and law enforcement personnel that saved what could have been an epic catastrophe by getting the crowds away from the scene where the bomb was ultimately placed. Uh, we've had some reports this morning that there had been some kind of relaxation of security in the past. I mean, things have been going so well for about a week now. And with my own experience as I went around that, that folks were just friendlier and they weren't checking quite as carefully as they might have. Were you concerned about that happening? Well, ultimately, our greatest fear was an act of terrorism. It has happened. But I don't think that we can second guess security because, in fact, it was the law enforcement personnel that prevented an even greater tragedy. They recognized this package and this knapsack as being inappropriate. They immediately called in the bomb experts. They cleared the area. They did everything humanly possible. And in fact, they saved a great deal of, of human lives and, and the catastrophe for catastrophe could have been much worse. There's a practical effect to all of this as well, Mr. Mayor. The people who are doing security in, in Atlanta have been working around the clock right up until 1 o'clock this morning, and then they've been asked to work again. Yes. Are you going to be able to fulfill all the personnel needs that you have? Absolutely. In fact, we have called in additional personnel to make certain that wherever it's necessary, we will have enhanced security. It's important to note two things, Tom. First, we still believe that the city of Atlanta is a safe place. The park, after it has been scrutinized and after all the evidence has been collected, will be reopened to the public. And I intend to go, and I intend to go with my family, and I hope others will continue to gather there. But second, inside the athletic venues, the security is much tighter. You must go through a number of security checks. And so I think that is the message also that must go forward. The games will continue. Life must go on. I know this is the last thing on your mind this morning, but there is a financial consideration to all of this. And Atlanta was counting on a lot of business during the Olympic Games and a lot of ticket sales. Are you concerned that there will be a fall off in terms of revenue? It has never even crossed our minds. Our emotion now, Tom, appropriately, is with the, the families of the victims. It's a terrible tragedy. This will cast a long shadow on the joy of our celebration here, as it has been magnificent over the last several weeks. But we now must go into a different mode, much more secure, still on a heightened sense of awareness. But nevertheless, we hope people will continue to enjoy our great city. Uh, we're going to hear from your fire chief here momentarily, but I had a report in the middle of the night that both your police department and your fire department had some kind of short warning that there might be an incident of some kind. Did you, were you able to check that out? There was a call that was placed shortly the, the before. The 911 call. Yes, shortly before the uh, explosion went off. It went through the procedures where we have received other threats during the games. And before we ultimately could respond, the bomb went off. Luckily, at the same time that it was being investigated, the officers on the scene had recognized the device, brought the bomb experts in who actually saw the device and were able to move people away. What was said on that 911 call? Well, it was simply another threat that we've had, as we've had many during these games. All of them have been checked. But that there, that there was a bomb in Centennial Park, is that what he said on the 911? It, it's, it's inappropriate to talk about exactly what was there. But I will say that uh, we've had a number of threats. They have all been dealt with accordingly. This, unfortunately, seemed to have uh, the ring of truth only because the bomb actually was there and went off. 
Mr. Mayor, I know that I speak for everyone when we say we wish you only the very best because the city of Atlanta has worked so hard to get these games and to put them on successfully, and there's such an emotional investment in all of this, and there's such deserved pride in the city of Atlanta. I know that this is not at all what you wanted to happen. It's your worst nightmare, I'm sure. It is our worst nightmare, but ultimately, Tom, we think that this country can never be held hostage to terrorism, and we will continue, and we think these games will be successful, although clearly this is a great tragedy for all of us. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for coming by this morning. It's operated at the very top of America's best intelligence agencies, also ran the CIA. We're watching track and field athletes now beginning their warm-up in Cheney Stadium. They're getting ready for the event of their lives. And, of course, it takes enormous physical and mental concentration this morning. We can only imagine what is going through their minds, how they will set all of that aside as they concentrate on only beating the people on either side of them. It's going to be a true Olympian test today. NBC's Roger O'Neill. Tom, the slow, meticulous job of the FBI of finding what happened and who did it has begun certainly only a block from here, where a bank of phones is now being swarmed over by FBI agents taking fingerprints, looking in the dirt for footprints. It is the uh, phone where the 911 call was made just before the explosion occurred, warning that there was something amiss in Centennial Park. That process will continue. It's, it's, the, it's the slow job that they have to do that leads to the conviction of these kinds of individuals. Sarah James is with me now, and she uh, has found some foreign visitors to Atlanta. That's right, Roger. I've talked to a number of people all over the place, talking to them about their decision to go ahead and come down to see the events in spite of what has happened, and that seems to be the general consensus. With me are Melissa and Helen from England, and their other friend also, Melissa, who is from Cleveland, Ohio. Melissa, when did you first learn what had happened? Uh, when we woke up this morning, uh, turned on the TV, getting ready to come down here to get tickets. What did you think when you saw that there had been a bomb? Uh, shocked. Couldn't believe it at first. Um, that's about it. You had actually been there to the Centennial Park, hadn't you? Yeah, we were there yesterday uh, evening, about 6 o'clock. And we're planning to go there that evening, but we got tickets for the water polo, so we didn't come. What were your feelings, Melissa, when you learned that there had been an explosion? Well, I was very like surprised and shocked. I mean, I don't, I never expected it, you know, to be happening. The security was supposed to be so great here, you know. And did you give any second thoughts to coming down today? No, I'm. I mean, this is the Olympic celebration. It's supposed to be a wonderful time of people coming together and all nations joining. And I never thought that it would happen here, you know. It's all right. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. And they are on to see some of the events, and that is indeed what many people are doing. Tom? Sir, James, thank you very much. At the equestrian events, which are just getting underway now, outside of Atlanta, a moment of silence. Merci, mesdames et messieurs, pour votre compréhension. A traditional announcement in two languages, French and English, as the event gets underway. I think this is in Conyers, Georgia. Um, and that will be happening all day long as 22 sporting events begin there will be a moment of silence. The flags will be lowered to half-staff. Part of the majesty of the Olympic Games and part of the great variety, obviously, of the Olympic Games, the equestrian events being called to order. But during the night, international Olympic officials and officials from the Atlanta Committee for the Olympic Games made the decision these games will go forward. A moment of silence at this morning's opening of the equestrian events. After the moment of silence, the equestrian events did begin outside of the city of Atlanta, but here in Atlanta at Olympic Stadium, track and field also scheduled to get underway today as we begin now the intense pace of these events over the course of the next four days or so. NBC's Len Cannon at Olympic Stadium with what is going on there in terms of preparation. Len? 
Tom, people are starting to fill up the Olympic Stadium. Uh, the first event is the women's heptathlon 100-meter hurdle starts in about 9.15. With me is David Daniels and his three children. When did you hear about the explosion, David? Uh, this morning at 4.30 when I woke up to get ready to come here today. And at what point did you decide to still come? Did you ever have any reservations about coming out to the stadium? Well, at first, but uh, I listened to the news for about an hour and made sure that it didn't happen here at the stadium. And um, I knew that the security would be uh, much tighter here. And, uh, and I knew going in that there would be some sort of a uh, risk involved, but it's, you know, it's the Olympics and we wanted to come. And, so here we are. You're a native of Georgia. Your thoughts about something like this happening in downtown Atlanta? Well, it's it's shocking. You know, I, I didn't think it would happen. Uh, it's really amazing that uh, it's just unbelievable. I can't, you know, I, st I guess it hasn't sunk in yet, you know, that, it, that something like that has actually happened. Do you plan to stick around for the rest of the Olympics as long as you're, uh, you were scheduled to, or do you plan on leaving earlier? Well, well, actually, we were planning on going after after the event today. We were planning on going downtown to the area that the uh, incident happened, but uh, I guess I guess we won't be able to do that. But uh, besides that, I guess we haven't changed our plans at all. All right, David Daniels and your children uh, enjoy the games today. Thank you. Thank Thanks uh, for stopping by. Uh, also with me today is uh, Don Thompson, who is uh, a native of. Uh, Georgia, suburban Georgia, Norcross, Georgia, Correct. I understand, suburban Atlanta. What uh, made you decide to come out today? Uh, no real change of plans. We've had the tickets for a while, and uh, it's a once-in-a-lifetime adventure. I'm not going to let some nut disrupt my plans. Uh, obviously a very uh, dangerous situation with a lot of people injured, two people killed so far. Did you ever have any reservations after you heard about this, about coming out to the Olympic Stadium today? No, not really. We heard about it very early. I've got a son that doesn't go to bed at night, so he came down about 1.30 or 1.40 and told us about it, and we turned on CNN. Uh, I, I've got confidence enough in the, in the security here. I think they have beefed it up somewhat this morning from what I understand, but I'm confident that uh, if somebody really wants to do it, no matter what the security is, they can get through. But no, I'm not going to let it change my plans. Your thoughts being a native of uh, this state, this happening here? Total disgust, total anger, uh, surprise, hoping in a way that if they do find out who did this, that it turns out to be someone international. It, I, I would just be very, very distraught if it turned out it was someone from the United States and particularly someone from Georgia. All right, Don Thompson, thank you for joining thank us you, and sir. enjoy the games today. Enjoy your stay. Thank you. All right, uh, Tom, that's the story from Olympic Stadium, the first event. The women's heptathlon 100-meter hurdles due to start at 9.15 on schedule, we are told. Tom? Ladies and gentlemen, as the coach and husband Olympic of Jackie Joyner, Kersey, now Atlanta let's listen to the moment of silence Olympic being introduced. I ask you to stand and join us for a moment of silence in respect and sympathy for those who lost their lives or were injured early this morning in the tragic incident at Centennial Olympic Park. What you're looking at there is a collage of the world's humanity, people gathered from all over the world for the Olympics, for track and field, the greatest athletic test known to mankind. And today, wherever those people are from, whoever they're cheering for, whatever their beliefs, they all are united by one thing. They have a common enemy, the unseen terrorist. And by showing up today, they are saying something to terrorism as well, that they shall not have their lives altered they won't be frightened from doing what they want to do. Down on the track and field, of course, the athletes now are getting ready to run the 100 meters. 
for the heptathlon. Jackie Joyner Kersey's husband, uh, Bob Kersey, did not tell her until they arrived at the stadium. He had a wonderful phrase, however. He said, you cannot ignore what goes on outside the gate, but once you go inside the gate, you have to concentrate on the event before you, and that's what she is doing right now. Probably the greatest single woman athlete ever to participate in the Olympics. Let's go to Centennial Park live now. That was a place that would have been bustling with people this morning. I mean, literally tens of thousands of people listening